So there's quite a few ways you can get your robot to turn. I just set up a bit of red tape on this green felt board just to give you a bit of clear an idea of what a right angle is because we're going to try and get it to turn at right angles. I built a very simple robot, very simple robot. It's kind of balanced. I was going to use ball bearings or ball and socket joints, but I found that uh, that gave a fairly inaccurate readings a lot of the time and, and mucked up my calculations. So I've just uh, made it so it's a fairly balanced, simple robot and I use code like this. So you set the movement motors, you tell it which motors are plugged into which ports and I did a speed of 40% and then I told it to turn right 30 for one rotations. So the one rotations means that it turns, the wheels turn once but a right 30 means that it's sort of a wide turn. A 100% turn, a right 100 would be a full turn around, like a spin. But a right 30 or 40, you're getting sort of a wide arc to it. You'll see that one rotation at right 40 goes quite of a wide turn still. One, one rotation, 1 1.33 rotations at a right 30 will almost give you a right angle. Um, but it's pretty tricky because it all comes down to how well you've made your robot or how differently you've made your robot. A lot of the time it depends on how close your wheels are together and how balanced it is and how strong it is and even how heavy it is and what surface you're on. So that was a right turn at 60 and you can see that it almost turns around on the spot for a full rotation. So you just have to use trial and error to get it to turn a right angle using this sort of code. You'll notice that if we use a, a right turn of 100, it, the robot spins on the spot. So that's how you can get your robot to spin, use a right turn of 100. That's like a 100% turn, that's as sharp as it goes. Basically, the wheels are spinning in opposite directions at full pace. And if you do 0.33 of a turn, it pretty much does a right angle. You can make your robot go left or you can make it go right, it doesn't really matter. Um, but 100 means that it will turn pretty much on the spot. It'll do a 360 basically if you do enough of a rotation. I found that 1.33 turns will pretty much do a 360. If you see here, I've typed in 1.33 rotations. When I press play, pretty much a 360. So sometimes you might want to do a 360 for some reason. I found that that's a pretty good setting for that. Often when I'm teaching, kids will say, I don't want to do rotations. Look, it says degrees. I want to do degrees. If I make it do 180 degrees, it'll make the robot turn 180 degrees. Well, that's incorrect because it actually makes the robot turn the wheels 180 degrees. So I stick to rotations or seconds. Um, it doesn't really matter which is which because they're both easy to estimate and calculate. If you go down the bottom left of your menu, you'll see that there's more options for more movement motors. So here's a different way you can get it to turn. In a Spike 3, there's only three blocks in the more movement X section, but you can actually make the wheels go opposite directions by giving one a negative speed and one a positive speed. So you could say move minus 50 and 50, and that'll make the wheels spin, but you'd have to tell it how long for. You might say wait for one second and then stop moving. Once it waits for one second, it'll stop. And you might say to yourself, mm, maybe I'll go for 0.8 of a second. 0.8 of a second might stop right on 360 or not quite far enough. So then you might say to yourself, oh, I might try 0.9 or even 0.85. You can try and figure it out yourself. So that's another way you can get a robot to turn. But the most exciting way, I think, to get the robot to turn is to actually use the gyro sensor built into the robot. And this code looks a little complicated. It's not as complicated as some codes I've seen, but we can actually use the built-in gyro section. If you tap on the connect tab on your iPad, you can actually tell how much your pitch and roll there is by moving the, moving the hub if it's connected. So your yaw is how much it turns left to right, and your roll is how much it turns from side to side, and your pitch is how much it turns up and down. But today we're going to use the yaw setting because it's basically telling how much you can work out how many degrees it turns left and right. That's exactly what we want to use. So you can use a bit of code like this. This is basically telling it where the motors are plugged in and what speed to go. And then it says when it gets to a certain yaw, when it's greater than 89, it's going to stop moving. So you can put it wherever you like and it it doesn't matter where it is on the floor, it'll set the yaw to zero when you put the robot down 
when it starts the code and then it'll calculate when it's greater than 89 degrees and that is an awesome way to get it to an exact right angle you might fiddle with the code you might instead of 89 you might say 87 or 88 or even 85 degrees and you just play with that until you think it looks like a good right angle so that's one way you can do it but you don't really want to do that every time you do a turn it's a fairly complicated bit of code in there but you can actually make your own block so if you go down the bottom left you see my blocks and when you press on my blocks you can make a new block you might call it right 90 if you talk, if you call the first block right 90 that means you can make a whole stack of blocks under that and then you'll just have one block called right 90 and it will run everything that's under that stack so i've made a block called right 90 and now you can see on the left there is an option in my blocks to add right 90 and that's all the code i need to do a right hand turn so every time i need to do a right hand turn i just have to press that right 90. likewise i can make another stack of blocks in my blocks make a new one called left 90. The left hand turn is a little more confusing because the scale actually goes down to negative 180 degrees. So if you wanted to do a left hand turn of 90, you have to say when it's less than a number like minus 89 or at minus 85 or minus 83 because it goes all the way down to negative 180. So when you make the stack of blocks for the left hand turn, the most important thing is that the your value is less than further past minus 100 minus 80 or minus 85 something like that and the cool thing about having your own blocks up there on the left is that every time you need to turn now you can just drag one of those blocks over so if you want to turn left you just grab the left 90 block if you want to turn right you just grab the right 90 block it simplifies things my blocks are pretty cool and so is my youtube channel please subscribe to my youtube channel check out my website robotman.com.au and enjoy